Arts Express presents Don Keel's keynote speech. This is a little balsa wood model of a freestanding CBT. And that's the one on the left. Well, actually, both of them. You know, you can see the speaker, little depictions of the speakers. And this would be an array. The speakers in the center would be turned up full. And I, I made an approximation to this shading so that the ones on the outside are down about 12 dB. And at zero in the center and about minus, now I'm looking, I'm talking about the bright side now. It's about minus three here and minus six, nine, and 12. So basically two thirds of the drivers are on zero and, you know, to minus three dB. Yes. No, no, no. I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's an oblique view. It is an exact circular arc. And it has to be that way. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Just like this. <laughs> when you're looking at it sideways. <laughs> and this is an example of uh, my first prototype, which is over here. And this shows the, the shading schematic, which is done passively inside the box. And you buy, and there, there's five different banks of speakers, and, and it goes in a my zero, minus three, six, nine, and 12, an approximation to this shading curve. And that's within these, too. This is done passively. And this shows the, the stepped approximation to it, and it's, there's different banks of drivers. Incidentally, my presentation is on the disk you have, the one that you're looking at right now. And this is the simulation of the beam width directivity in what I call on axis loss, which is the power loss. Are, are, are most of you familiar with what I mean by beam width? Does that make sense to anybody? Some of you are shaking your heads. Usually it's defined, you go from on axis to a point off axis where the level drops by 6 dB, one side and the other. And then the included angle is the beam width angle. And ideally, you'd have a, a beam width that doesn't change with frequency. But it does. And this, is, this represents, if you just simply take these drivers, don't have shading, this shows the, the beam width and directivity. And the beam width is pretty flat, but it has some anomalies. And when you switch over to the, the shading, it gets extremely constant. Everything just is extremely well behaved when you go from here, actually from there to there. And you get a constant directivity. I mean, the directivity refers to how the sound is dispersed. What is the beam width Ah, that has a beam width of about 60 degrees. It's, it's rough. With this shading, it's three-fourths of the arc angle. So if you have a... Uh, what's three-fourths of 90? Real quick, you guys. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a 90-degree arc... It's beam width is 75 degrees. Or if it's 60 degrees, it ends up being 45. So that's easy. That's an easy relationship. And this, this is, this, this really works. It, and now one thing that uh, Doug Button suggested to me one day is why don't we cut the thing off in the middle and put it down on the ground. Now that in itself is nothing new. You made... If one, of, one of you may uh, be a ham radio operator. Where on the top of a police car you have a quarter wave whip. And it, it uses the electromagnetic ground plane at the top of the car to create the other part of the ray to make it twice as big. So there's nothing new there. But, it, you know, it, so basically you can cut this in half and set it down on the floor. Now one of my, one prototype that I have called the CBT-30 is a 30 degree arc and it's a ground plane. That's up on that, the fourth poster. And this is a balsa wood model that I had the tech build. And this is quarter size. And this actually sits on the ground just like the ones that are up here. And the, the drivers are on full on the bottom and then taper off to minus 12 dB at the top. The same as they are here. Here's something that 
should be quite interesting to you, and it was to me, is you can analyze the, the vertical field sound, the vertical sound field of a, an acoustic source. You can plot the sound pressure magnitude in a region in front of it going up and down. And uh, I have some quick time movies that I'm going to display to you that represent a point source over a reflective and non-reflective ground plane. I mean, you have a speaker here. You have a, a tiled floor. You're going to get reflections off of that. I mean, it's as if there's another speaker down underneath the floor in equidistant down below that this one is above. So you're actually listening to two point sources and they interfere with each other. And so the same thing, and I also have a, I produced a hypothetical three-way system using point sources of woofer mid-range and tweet crossed over with 200 hertz with Linquist Riley. And uh, that looks sort of okay without the ground plane, but as soon as you throw the ground plane in there, it doesn't look very good at all. Even though it's Linquist Riley, because you get a, you get this 200 hertz dip in the major dip in the frequency response due to the sound from the floor growing up and merging with the direct sound. Now what I did is I plotted the sound field in a three meter high by four meter long, and I have uh, you can see the on the on the left there is the woofer mid range and tweet tweeter. Half a meter up for the woofer and one meter up, and they're crossed over. Now I'm going to show you the, the quick time movies here. Escape. I'm going to go down here. Do any of you use Windows 7 now? Yes. Anybody here? Who is using Windows 7? One really neat feature about Windows 7 is you have the icons and you can set them up so that you, you take your, like here what I did, what I had just done there, I, I, I hovered the, the, the mouse over the QuickTime icon and all the QuickTime movies, when in this case five, pop up on the screen. And if you take it off, they disappear. You see that? That's really, it's neat. And you can select them because I've got, I've got like 15 to 20 windows open and when they, when they normally get thrown down on the tray on the previous versions of windows you can't find anything <laughs> but here it categorizes them <laughs> but click the link in the description for the next part of don's presentation